Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at proteins, the biuret test, lipids, the emulsion test, and then we'll finish with a summary. So in order to test for the presence of proteins in a sample, we have to use the biuret test. The biuret test can be used to test for proteins by detecting a particular feature in proteins, which is the presence of peptide bonds. So remember, a protein is a chain of amino acids, and the bond that keeps those amino acids together is what we're testing for in this particular chemical test. So here we have our different amino acids attached to each other in a chain. And every time we see these links, we see a peptide bond. And it's these peptide bonds which are being tested for in this particular procedure. So first of all, we place the sample that we're testing into a clean test tube so that it sits at the bottom. And then we add the solution called biuret A. So biuret A is a solution called sodium hydroxide. And we simply add this to the test tube. So we've got the sample, and then as we add this to the sample, we form a mixture, and then we add this biuret A solution, which is sodium hydroxide. After we've added the biuret A, we add a few drops of biuret B, and biuret B is made up of copper 2 sulfate. So this is then added, and the solution is gently mixed. So now we have a complete mixture of biuret A plus biuret B plus our sample and biuret B is this copper 2 sulfate solution. If there is protein present in our sample, i.e. if those peptide bonds are detected, then the colour of the reagent or the mixture changes from a blue colour to a purple colour. So it starts out as being blue just before the test or it stays blue if there are no proteins and if proteins are present it changes to a purple colour. We also need to know how to test for lipids as well, another common molecule found in many foods and we use the emulsion test to detect the presence of these lipids. And remember, lipids can be found in things like oils and fats, like butter. So first of all, again, we place the sample into a clean test tube using a pipette. And then we add the particular alcohol known as ethanol, and the solution is mixed thoroughly to dissolve any lipid present. So first we add the ethanol, and once we've done this, we stir this around and mix it so that any lipids that are present get dissolved within the ethanol. Once any lipids have been dissolved, we then just add water and then we mix it gently all together. So just plain water being added now. And then what we see is a cloudy white substance forming, which indicates that lipids are present in the sample. So what we've done is once we've added the water and shaked it, we see this cloudy white substance form at the top. And if this is present, then there are lipids in the sample. The reason we get this cloudy white substance is because the lipids aren't soluble in the water. So they simply come out of the solution and they form their own emulsion at the top of the test tube. So initially with the alcohol and the lipids, they were happily dissolved in the alcohol. But when we added the water, they're not able to dissolve in water because they're very hydrophobic molecules. So they start leaving the water and we see this collection of lipid globules separated from the water and rising to the top. And so that's what forms this cloudy white substance. And obviously if the sample doesn't contain any lipids at all, then this cloudy white substance won't be present. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.